In their recent Round 8 Australian Open game on the top board, Igor Kenkin from Russia with the black pieces was facing Bobby Cheng from Australia with the white pieces. Bobby has just played the move 7, Bishop d3, putting pressure on Igor's chess position. The Grandmaster decided that he would meet this threat with a very good move. What would you play in this position if you were Igor Kenkin and why? Good evening everyone, this is Firegoat7 bringing you another game from the Australian Open. This time it's the Round 8 Board 1 Clash between Bobby Cheng from Victoria with a rating of 2377 versus Igor Kenkin from Russia with a rating of 2659. This is an 8th round game from the Australian Open and it was a great game. The game begins. Bobby has the white pieces. He plays the move D4. Kenkin replies with D5. Classical systems and C4, the good move. Kenkin chooses to go into a slab setup with C6. Solid and active at the same time. Knight F3, the best move here. And now Kenkin decides that he's going to play E6. And this is, um, this is a good solid structure to play. The only disadvantage being the light squared bishop on this square may find it difficult to get into the game. Bobby's turn. He plays a nice solid system. He plays E3. We saw this already in Brown. Brown's game against Miles and Lai where he played the same sort of idea. And the idea is to set up solid without developing the dark squared bishop outside the pawn chain. Knight F6. Good move. Develops the king side. And now B3. And we can see now that this dark squared bishop is probably going to head out onto the B2 square. It can't go on to the a3 square because of the tactic with the queen on d8. And this is a solid way of playing the position. Black decides to give the check bishop b4. So the question is how is Bobby going to defend? Is he going to block with his knight or his bishop? He decides that he's going to block with his knight and keep the bishop pair. Kenkin's move. And Kenkin plays knight e4. So now there are two attackers. Two attackers. One, two. On the d2 square. Which at the moment is defended by one, two, three, four pieces. So it's looking, looking as if black wants to swap off two sets of minor pieces here in this game. And also make white's development a little bit problematic. And Bobby chooses... To put the question to the knight straight away and continue developing his pieces. So now the knight, the bishop on d3 uh, prepares white for castling and attacks the e4 square. Igor Kenkin uh, changes the pawn formation. He turns it into a stonewall dutch type setup where black has the pawns and the light squares and bishop tops on e4 then he's always got a capture either with the F pawn or the D pawn. Bobby decides in this position he's going to castle kingside. So white's just going around completing their development and black's solidified on the E4 square and is applying some pressure on the D2. Igor Kenkin continues to develop, and that knight's going to d7, where it's probably headed to the f6 square, where it can support e4 even more. Bishop b2. So now what's happening here is uh, is Bobby's finished developing his last minor piece. He now has all these knights and bishops developed, and he's saying to Kenkin, "All right." You can sort off two minor sets of pieces with the knight and the bishop if you want to, but I'm going to get my pieces active. Igor King can get his king into safety on the king side. A3. Now this bishop on B4 is an annoying piece for white. White can't really get too active without first resolving the tension between this bishop and this knight and try to figure out 
exactly what black intends to do with the bishop. And so a3 gains time on the bishop and says to the, says to black, look, what are you going to do with your bishop? Are you going to capture or are you going to retreat? Kenkin decides to retreat and keeps the bishop pair for himself. And now Bobby doesn't have to worry so much about simplification on the d2 square. Yeah, it might happen once, but once is not going to harm you too much uh, compared to two moves or two minor piece captures, which would reduce your any winning chances White may have. Bobby's turn, and he decides he's going to push on on the coin side, gaining space with b4. This prevents the c5 break, so it prevents... It prevents c5, c6 to c5 being played because now you can capture with the pawns. And it also allows white the possibility of playing c5 if they wish. So it looks as if as if Bobby's plan is pretty clear. He also might in some, some lines a bit later on want to play b5 to open up the position. If he, he, He's always got the chance of this move a bit later on. So we'll see. What he's doing, but at the moment he's just gaining space on the queen side with with the pawn structure. Igor Kenkin plays queen f6. So the idea here is probably to push a big big king side attacking plan. Maybe g5 might be in order, or or even queen h6 in some lines. Uh, the queen on h6. If it goes to h6, it might be able to target the h2 square. Or you know, there's always the push g5, g4, which could be a problem for, for white. So black's just getting ready to uh, attack quickly through the center. Another good thing about e5 is that the queen on e, f6, sorry, is that it's attacking the f, e5 square. So white's got three on this, one, two, three, and now black has three defenders of it, which is also probably a little bit important. And... It's a nice, uh, an interesting move anyway. So now it's it's White's turn. And Bobby plays Knight E1. Which one could say is slightly inaccurate. But it's not necessarily a mistake at all. The idea is a positional idea. I think what he wants to do is he wants to play F3 and push, push the Knight back out of his position. He wants to get rid of this Knight on E4. And a logical way of doing that is to play with f3. Uh, it also allows white the possibility of playing f2 to f4 and blocking up the center completely because after all, you don't particularly, white's not particularly enjoying the fact that the bishop on d6 is uh, eyeing off the h2 square. Uh, this is more of a king's indian plan however. Smooth, so it's black's turn now, let's see what Igor Kenkin does.